It works better. Why does it work better? The same reason as in your blood. If you do live blood cell analysis and they see your red, white blood cells and they see them all clumped up together, they say, you got a problem. If they show your blood cells all standing by themselves, a single healthy sphere, and they don't need to clump up with their neighbors, they say, ooh, you have strong blood, congratulations, right? How do you get your blood that way? Actually, Pat Flanagan would be proud if you take his microclusters, just a couple drops, and then, and then you do the live blood cell analysis. I've actually done this. You see, the blood cells are now standing by themselves. They don't have to clump up, you know? They are self-empowered, self-imploded, monomolecularly stable. So a biochemical explanation would be that a water molecule that's now stable as a microcluster has drastically increased surface area availability, which means drastically increased solubility, which is what Pat Flanagan was implying as well, which is the beginning of the mechanism for the 300% growth we measure. The point is that what made the water molecule stable as a microcluster when it went through phase conjugate magnetics is what's making the hydrogen atom stable as a monoatom, what Pat Flanagan would call microhydrin, where he took hydrogen atoms and tucked it inside a dodecahedron of water molecules called the clathrate cage and was very economically successful with the microhydrin megahydrin project. So the principle of all of these things is basically the same. The principle is get that electric field implosive, magnetically, optically, dielectrically, and you will treat the matter, the atoms, the molecules, to the privilege of becoming implosive. And that will make them stable as a monoatom or microcluster. And when you do that to hydrogen, you get all these very interesting properties of hydrogen. How many are familiar with uh, Professor Santilli's magna gas project? Anybody know about that? Yes. So a bunch of people have invented a n different name for what happens to the plasma of hydrogen when you implode it, but it's magic. It is just absolutely magic. You've got this plasma of hydrogen, which would, can pass through certain substances, like uh, going <laughs> through a mirror. It reminds me of um, the Brown's gas material. Let's talk about Brown's gas for just a moment. The Brown's gas is behind the presentation of Spiros. Spir thank you. So Spiros is going to be talking to you very shortly about his work and study personally with Mr. Brown. Was that correct? Yes. And um, in the Brown's gas device, among other things, you took the hydrogen plasma that came out and you could take that hydrogen flame a blue fire that does not consume, and there's all kinds of films of this, and I'm sure you'll be talking more about this, but you can take that blue flame and you can cut through a brick, you can cut through steel, but when you take that same blue flame, it won't cut your hand. I want you to know why. Do you know why? Yes, go ahead. Um, it's thought that uh, there's a, it imparts electrons into the material and if the materials really conductive it will conduct them away and if it's not very conductive then it will melt and, and I like that that's a helpful language that, and the, the, the way I'm is that okay yeah yeah well you see but I want to know if you're being facetious no 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 I, you, you see you, you see now a conventional electrical engineer I'm an electrical engineer would say wait steel is more conductive than human tissue no, but, but water won't even boil if you put bronze gas flame on it. That's right. Because it will absorb right. those electrons. That, right? yeah, wonderful. So what you're saying is it did not create heat. And I think we can get that language to be a little bit more precise when we... I hope so. Yes. <laughs> when we understand that living human tissue has an electrical quality called phase conjugate, which means that the charge propagation through there, when you introduce the implosive compression of hydrogen in anything that's not phase conjugate, you'll make lots of heat in the steel. When you put it through your hand, if your hand is healthy, if the tissue is healthy, it won't make heat because the compression in a fractal makes no heat. 
This is how you survive the solar wind, the rapture. You don't want to be the left behind, do you? Right. No. So get fractal or get dead. <laughs> so the idea here is that if you understand the actual physics of what's making that vril, blue flame, the fire that does not consume, implosive, a cold fire, the physics of fusion, what is the deep symmetry of that flame? My teacher at the Gurdjieff School got his PhD in physics on the physics of flame at the Sorbonne. <laughs> studying flame is a wonderful spiritual meditation. And we are now, at this moment, studying the flame of the Brown's gas. The other thing that all these people had, have noticed is that implosive plasma of hydrogen will travel through tubes as a waveguide in ways that you would not normally consider a gas would propagate. So we're getting a powerful clue to the nature of implosion by studying the flame that is hydrogen. Now the joke cell, as we were discussing, we now think we know how to take those concentric rings and optimize that. Let's, let's try to take a specific example. Specifically, how would we actually optimize the Joe cell if we understood the physics? Let me give you a little uh, background here. Our friends in Australia, <clears throat> friends of Joe, they were famous. They could take about any car from and they could go to a hardware store and buy about $200 worth of stuff and they could modify any car and you could drive it across Australia in a cup full of water. Ran into trouble with the government. You could make a good movie of the story. <laughs> uh, but the point is there's some lessons to be learned here. You're driving along in your car on imploding hydrogen and what you notice is when you're somewhere where the charge is organized, you get lots of power. But if you happen to drive over a railroad track where there's lots of metal railroad right by your car, you know what happens? It stops. I'd like you to explain to me why. This is our lesson for the day. Uh, also, incidentally, as uh, Paul was mentioning, if the sun happens to be obscured, you lose power. The nature of implosion is that the electrical inertia is being sucked in from the environment. If the environment is fractal, you gather a lot of inertia in the centripetal process. For the same reason that rainbows only occur when the air is fractal. <laughs> we don't have time for that discussion right now, but it's a beautiful metaphor to learn from. So the reason your car stops when you drove over the railroad tracks if you're using imploding hydrogen, is because the railroad tracks are made of steel, opposite to phase conjugate, for the same reason that steel and aluminum in your house take the souls from your children, because it prevents their aura from having a place to grow. Your house and your car and your city need to look like a rose, that is, be fractal, if your aura wants the ability to grow. And that is the purpose of life, is to grow your aura, your car. In, uh, in Sumerian that we call fa atun, to fatten, to feed your aura. <laughs> so the aura of your car could no longer get fed. Let me give you another way to think about that. Later, if we have time, we're going to discuss the physics of human bliss. Now, human bliss is actually powered by the same electricity as that car. When that car is driving along on imploding hydrogen, it's depending on the implosion of the electric field of its environment. So, when a human being has bliss, this is a human being having an intense bliss experience. Thank you, Roger. That if you measure the power spectra of their brain waves with my invention, the bliss tuner, and the new version is coming out this week, thelovetuner.com, we have one, two, three, four, up to five harmonics in the EEG cross hemisphere precisely in golden mean ratio, which means that your brain is making phase conjugation to cause your plasma to implode, and you call that enlightenment. But what we notice with people like myself who have 30 years of intense Kundalini experience is that if you try sustaining bliss experience in a building made of steel and aluminum, eventually you're going to feel poisoned for the same reason that car stopped. 
Because if your environment is not fractal, there is no centripetal.